Hi everybody and welcome to this month's production podcast. Uh, this month we're going to talk to you about guilds. Um, but before I get into a lot of the details, I want to take you back to the playground. Now stay with me for a moment, I'm going to run you through some philosophy. When you think about the types of games that you played as a kid, they were almost all two different things. They were social and they were competitive. You played them with other people and you played them against other people. So if you think about the types of things that you did on the playground, dodgeball, kickball, baseball, soccer, all of these games have a social com component where you're cooperating with other people uh, towards a goal. And you're competing against another team to try and accomplish that victory as a group. One of the things that was interesting about PC games for years and years is that they lacked that almost completely. They were solitary and they were non-competitive. You played them alone and you really were only playing against the game itself. When MMOs finally came around, uh, about 10 years or so ago, uh, people started to uh, reintroduce that idea of social gaming uh, to the PC world. And so you were back in a world and you, you were still basically competing against the system, but you were at least playing around other people. Uh, so even though it wasn't totally cooperative, it was very social. Uh, one of the things that's always been exciting to us about RVR is that it reintroduces that final component of what we like to call sort of natural gaming. The types of things that everybody worldwide for the entire sort of history of humanity has been doing when they play. Working with other people, playing against other people, cooperating, competing, and achieving in a social environment. RVR brings all of that back to the table. So today we're going to run you through some of the things that we're doing with our guilds to really try and lift that idea up and put it right at the forefront of the overall experience that you're going to get with Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the specifics now. Now I know that most of you understand the basics of how guilds usually work in an MMO, but we're going to run you through some of the low-level stuff just to make sure that everybody's up to speed. At the simplest level, a guild is a group of players who want to get online and play a game together cooperatively. Now, in a game like Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning, where RVR really is a huge focus in the game, it's not simply a convenient thing to be doing, it's actually a really critical strategic component of the game. Of course, the idea of a large group of warriors operating together is something that we share with the classic Warhammer tabletop game, where armies are constantly battling against one another for control of the world. And because of this, Guilds in Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning aren't just given a group of tools to help them organize, they're actually given strategic benefits for cooperating and working together on the battlefield. So to get these sort of advantages, the first thing you have to do, obviously, is form a guild. Any six players can get together, go to a capital city, and form a guild. Once they've done that, they're automatically given the opportunity to choose leaders, uh, to communicate with other guild members, to assign and collect membership dues, uh, to form alliances, to form strategies, to vote on issues, and to do all the basic things that you would expect a guild to be able to do. But what I'd really like to focus on today are the things that make our guild stand out. In Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning, we have what we call the Living Guild System. Uh, your guild isn't just an extra chat channel and a couple of tools that help you organize yourselves. It's a living, breathing, adapting part of the game world. And it's something that grows with the players that are part of that guild as they move through the game together. So first, let's talk about guild advancement. Living guilds in Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning actually advance much in the same way that players do. Everything that a player does in the game, and we're not just talking about RVR here, uh, public quests, standard quests, unlocking things in the tome, discovering lairs, success in RVR, all of these things contribute both to a player's overall development, but also to the growth and advancement of their guild. A quick note about guild experience. It's not drawn from your personal experience as a player. While you're moving through the game and advancing through 40 levels as a character, you have a separate pool of experience that's dedicated to your guild. So being part of a guild doesn't actually slow you down in terms of character leveling. And actually, guilds level much the same way that players do. There are 40 player levels, and there are 40 guild ranks. Being part of a guild also gives you access to one of the coolest parts of the game. What I'm talking about there is the ability for a guild to attack, take over, and claim a keep for themselves. Now, anybody can take part in the assault and capture of a keep, as well as the defense of a keep that's already controlled by their realm. But only guilds have the ability to go out, control a keep, hang their banners from the wall, and really stand out in the world as the individual group that's responsible for this piece of territory. Capturing and controlling keeps is an absolutely critical part of the RVR campaign. In addition to the strategic benefits that you get from controlling territory, it also offers practical benefits to allied players in the area of that controlled keep. And while all those elements are really cool, the things we're most excited about in the Living Guild system are the banners. Now, guild banners are more than just decoration. 
At a certain rank, your guild earns the right to carry its banner onto the battlefield. The player who holds the guild banner is the standard bearer. And while being the standard bearer is a position of valor and honor on the battlefield, that player cannot use their abilities, tactics, or morale while they hold the banner in combat. Guilds also have the opportunity to attach trophies to their banners, allowing them to celebrate past glory and victories on the battlefield. And because we've made banners so cool, of course we give you the opportunity to take a banner away. Banners can be captured in RVR, either by defeating a standard bearer or by capturing a planted banner from the ground. Other than the fact that it makes them really angry, why would you want to capture an enemy's banner? Well, it's because of something we haven't told you about yet. I mentioned earlier that a banner is not merely decoration. Once your banner is on the battlefield, it becomes the focus and the rallying point for all of the guild members present. Simply by being near their banner, all guild members in the area gain a morale bonus that helps them on the battlefield. Additionally, as a guild ranks up, it earns new banner abilities that the standard bearer can use on the battlefield to drive the fight forward. One of the first abilities gained allows the standard bearer to plant the banner in the ground, freeing him to fight alongside his guildmates. There are other abilities, such as Rally, that allow guilds to move more rapidly on the battlefield. Another ability called Flourish allows the standard bearer to use his banner to knock back advancing enemies. Those are just a few examples of abilities granted to the standard bearer, but we have yet to talk about what really makes banners so important on the battlefield. Tactics. Guild tactics are earned through guild advancement, and used just like player tactics, and there are up to three slots available on each banner. Before heading out onto the battlefield, the guild has the opportunity to build different loadouts that are useful in different situations in RVR. Guilds can eventually have up to three unique banners available to them at any one time. So this has been a brief overview of our Living Guild system. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next month.